The announcement of successful vaccine trials with efficacy rates of more than 90% by three organizations has provided some hope that the COVID-19 pandemic can be overcome. But once vaccines are approved and available, when will South Africans be able to access them? We spoke to Professor Shabi Mahdi, who heads up the South African leg of the Oxford Coronavirus Vaccine Trial, and Professor Salim Abdul Karim, the co-chair of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19, to find out more about these vaccines and when they would be accessible to our citizens. The results we heard in the last two weeks are momentous. Humankind has never made a vaccine against a coronavirus before. To be able to develop a vaccine in the space of under 10 months, when it usually takes more than 10 years to develop a vaccine, speaks for itself. Now that we know a vaccine is feasible, a safe and effective vaccine is doable, we now will be seeing the results from several other trials. So what we have at this stage is just the results from the first three trials. The first two of them are using an, a messenger RNA platform, which is a completely new technology and that's being used by Pfizer and by Moderna. And then we have uh, adenoviral vector vaccines being used by the Gamalaya Sputnik uh, V vaccine, which has been shown to provide 92% efficacy in a much smaller study. So we're in a very really good space, but uh, the big challenges that we now face is uh, the ability of the companies to scale up in terms of manufacture, as well as the deployment of the vaccine. Can we do so within a matter of a few months? No, that's not feasible. The technologies themselves require time. So we are looking at probably the next year or two before there will be sufficient doses that have been manufactured. So the two vaccines that have now shown to be efficacious, uh, Pfizer is an, is an example, have indicated that uh, by the end of this year, at best, they would be able to produce 40 million doses of vaccine. And by the end of 2021, 1.3 billion doses of vaccine. Moderna, which is the other company, indicates that they would probably produce 20 million doses of vaccine by the end of this year, and perhaps 600 million doses by the end of next year. Now, the nature of these two companies, and in terms of the agreements that they've entered into already, uh, basically leads itself uh, that the bulk of the vaccine that is going to be produced during the course of the first six months uh, is already been spoken for. So, as an example, the Moderna vaccine was actually funded by the U.S. government as part of, of Operation Warp Speed. And the commitment is the initial bulk of vaccine that would be produced by Moderna would basically be servicing the U.S. market. Pfizer has also entered into agreement with the U.S. as well as with other high-income countries, putting them ahead of the line to receive the vaccine. So where that leaves a country such as South Africa and in fact most other low-income countries is, is we're pretty much right now at the bottom of uh, the queue uh, in terms of being able to access vaccine in the immediate future. Mahdi also said that for vaccines to have an immediate impact on the pandemic, multiple companies, as many as 10, need to be successful in order to produce sufficient volumes of the vaccine in the next six months. But not all is lost for South Africa. South Africa is in a fortunate position in that we involved in three, four different vaccine trials. So it puts us into some sort of advantageous position in terms of uh, being able to access at least those vaccines. Now, as part of the agreement with some of the studies uh, is for South Africa to be able to gain access to vaccine at a reasonable price for at least some percentage of the population. If that's the case, when could South Africa get the vaccine? The experts aren't certain of when South Africa will be able to have access to some vaccines, but have their own estimations. <laughs> I have no idea. I wish I could give you an answer. I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, we just have no idea because remember, these companies haven't made the vaccines yet. It's not like the vaccines are sitting somewhere and they just have to be shipped here. They still have to be made. We have no idea how long that's going to take. Are they going to have problems in making it? I mean, those are all unanswered questions. I think we'd be lucky, you know, if we can get vaccines 
in the third quarter of next year. That would be uh, that. That would mean we were fortunate to get it at that time. More likely, it would be even later. So, government under no scenario right now, by the end of 2021, is going to be able to procure enough vaccine for all adults in South Africa. That is not going to happen. But if we can at least get adequate amount of vaccine for about 20 percent to 25 percent of the adult population, that means that we can at least target those individuals that are most at risk of developing severe COVID illness as well as of dying from COVID-19. So the, when vaccine will become available in South Africa to a large extent is dependent on government, its engagement with the different uh, manufacturers. And I think government needs to basically be proactive in terms of that engagement. And it's not just about also getting the vaccine. It's also about ensuring that the systems are in place to be able to deploy the vaccine. And often that becomes a major challenge. So the structure, that, the infrastructure that's required to actually deploy this vaccine at scale, specifically when we're looking at targeting specific uh, high-risk groups, that infrastructure needs to be developed now. So if we are fortunate enough to get at least some vaccine by the second quarter of next year, then we don't spend another three to six months trying to figure out how to actually deploy this vaccine. What's going to be important for us is to see how many vaccines become available, what the benefits and the disadvantages are of each, benefit, of each vaccine. So some vaccines are just inappropriate for South Africa. Vaccines that require very low storage temperatures are not going to be easy for us to distribute. So we would rather wait for another vaccine that would be easier for us to do, it may be cheaper and may even require just a single dose. So we need to not prejudge that issue. We need to keep an open mind, pick the vaccines that are best suited for us, ensure that we have adequate budgetary uh, allowance for that. The experts say the first batch would be prioritized to those of high risk, such as health workers, people over the age of 65, people with comorbidities and to areas with a high density population. With our economy battered, purchasing these vaccines will come at a cost. But Karim is hopeful we can get funding. The government needs to allocate that funding. It is possible that some of that could be met from philanthropy within South Africa, from business, from the Solidarity Fund. Some of it could be met by medical insurances like the medical aids. And I think it's a combination of all those sources of funding. Experts say having vaccines is not the only solution to beating the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to have to live with the situation of the current restrictions for quite a while. You know, wearing masks and social distancing because it's not just that we have a vaccine, we've got to get to a point where we've vaccinated enough people in our society that we can drop those measures. And that's going to take a long time.